we can sort of roll into things. It's almost 835. And um, we have on our handy dandy agenda that I have right here that Ken and I are going to welcome you for five minutes. <laughs> I'm realizing now I'm not <laughs> sure what we're going to say. Ken? <laughs> welcome, everyone. We're doing a shout out. Start calling out everyone. <laughs> So uh, today's event is basically to tell you about Kid Lit GN and about Kids Comics Unite. And both of us, we're, we're different organizations, but we par are partnering with each other to bring you this fall festival, Pitchapalooza. Um, Kid Lit GN has their pitching event. Kids Comics Unite has our pitching event. And this info session tonight is basically to kind of walk you through who we are and what we do and um, answer questions that you might have because I'm sure there are questions. Ken, do you have anything to add to that intro? Um, You did it perfectly. Oh, I'll have another <laughs> intro and I get into my thing, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, All we're right. very excited here at um, Kid Lit GN to partner up with Kids Comic Unite. And you guys have been doing a lot of great stuff over the past year, couple of years, I guess. And um, our group was started back in 2020. And uh, we just saw a need at that time to bring out, you know, more exposure to the creators. And um, Janelle came up with the idea of cr coming up with a pitch event via Twitter. But now it's kind of transitioned to fully on our website just because of all the limitations that's been happening for Twitter. And so we've now migrated entirely the whole pitch event to our website. So we're very excited for this month. I think it's going to be action packed. Yes. So actually, Ken, you and I should introduce ourselves. I just realized. <laughs> so yeah, my name is Ken Lamug. I am an author and illustrator, and I've been creating uh, graphic novels, comics, picture books since about since about 2011. Um, so it's been um, over 10 years now, and um, I've just been plugging away. So I started kind of like a lot of you guys, just trying to figure out, um, especially with traditional publishing space, it's a little bit different than trying to, you know, either go the independent route or trying to submit to uh, comic book companies. So it's a lot of uh, learning and, um, you know, trying to find an agent, all those different things. So I've went through the entire process and uh, it's been an adventure. So, but you got to love the process. That's what I keep telling myself, you know, enjoy the process and the results will come. Yeah. So I guess um, I am um, Jana Morishima and I am the founder of Kids Comics Unite and also a literary agent. I have an agency called Janico. I actually started Kids Comics Unite and Janico exactly the same time. And originally, Kids Comics Unite was just a little meetup in a little cafe in New York City. And that's all I ever thought it was going to be. <laughs> but it morphed way beyond my wildest dreams into what it is now, which is an online community. And um, my background in graphic novels goes way, way back. I started at Scholastic in 2002 and was involved in the founding of um, the Scholastic Graphics imprint. I worked with Raina Telgemeier and Jeff Smith and Kazuki Buishi way back in the day, and then um, went on, did some other things in publishing. I left publishing for a while and then came back. Um, so that's my little spiel. And I think we are going to start today's info session with Ken giving you more in-depth background on Kid Litchian. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen. So here we are at kidlitgn.com. Like I said, this is a free pitch event that was started back in 2020. Um, and we started it as a Twitter pitch event, and it became a hybrid pitch event, both on Twitter and on our website. And eventually, we finally transitioned to just fully sharing it um, or putting the, the pitches via our website. And this is our team. We have Tim, Urania, Annette, uh, Russ, and Janelle, and um, a bunch of great uh, creators. And they're all very talented and um, very accomplished in their own rights. And we put together the website just so that um, 
creators like yourself can get exposure and pitch your stories to agents, publishers, um, and uh, and editors. And so our website, KidLitGM, is where you can pitch your manuscripts, your illustrations, uh, your portfolio. So if you're an author or an illustrator, either agented or unagented, you can pitch your story ideas via our website, kidlitgn.com. We are primarily focusing on middle grade and younger age groups. So if you go to pitch now on our website, you can see if you're an unagented or agented. And we have the different categories here. We have the middle grade, early or chapter, chapter graphic novels, early readers, and also graphic uh, picture books. And so those are the three main categories that we have. We also have another website that we are launching. It's currently being worked on, but it's basically yagnpitch.com. And that is focused for the YA uh, age group. So it's for the, um, the a little bit older age group. And Vanya is the one who is in charge of that. So that site is currently being worked on. And it's basically the process that I'm going to be explaining here. It's going to be very similar to how you're going to pitch on the YAGN uh, website. So to start off with, let's start off with the pitch event dates. Um, the pitch event date is from October 4th through the 6th. That's the live viewing date. That's the date when the agents, the publishers, and the editors will go to the website and view all of your pitches. Now we have a what we call a, a preloading date where you can submit your pitches in advance. And that is from October 1st through the, the 3rd. So between that window, you get to load up your pitches, make any changes. And then on October 4th, we publish them so they're live for the public to view. Um, for agents, editors, and publishers, you are also encouraged to join and review all of the amazing pitches that's gonna go live. So it's open to all agents, editors, and publishers. And some housekeeping questions that we always get is uh, how many pitches are you allowed to submit? So you can submit up to three different pitch ideas. And if you are an illustrator, either unagented or agented, you can also pitch your portfolio. So if you're looking for illustration work, that kind of thing, you can uh, pitch it here. But there's a caveat where if you are pitching an illustration portfolio, you cannot pitch a book project. And that's kind of the rule that we have for now. And that might change later. But for now, if you're if you're pitching a book idea, then you should not be pitching an illustration portfolio and vice versa. Um, another thing that I wanted to mention is commenting on the posts. So when the commenting is only allowed for agents, editors, and publishers, and we highly recommend that you don't comment. And we try to do that to keep the website clean that way when agents editors and publishers are looking through the pitches it's not um it's not confusing and it's not cluttered with comments from you know like hey great job we really like this idea that kind of thing so we try to keep it clean so please refrain from commenting on uh, on those pitches and last thing is i guess let's see here before we jump and and if if you do get an agent or a, an editor or a publisher commenting on your pitch, what would be your next step? So the first step is to make sure to read their guidelines and check and see if there's any um, link to their website maybe that says, you know, here's how you actually submit your full pitch to me, that kind of thing. So make sure to follow those guidelines and don't try to reply back via the commenting system. So I'm gonna sh start and show you how to do the pitch. So first off, I wanna highly recommend that you go to the information section and make sure to check out the rules and the FAQ. Those are very important. And a lot of your questions are probably gonna be answered via the rules or the FAQ section. And also the how to pitch section will basically show you how to load a pitch. And I'm gonna go through that real quick. So first thing you do to load a pitch is you just go to the pitch now you identify what uh, category, age group, or type of uh, book that you're trying to, to pitch. So for example, we're gonna go to unagented and we're gonna go to middle grade. And here you can see 
on the top header, it says unagented middle grade. So double check that, make sure that you're in the right section. And if you scroll down, it's basically just like commenting on, um, on a, a blog, right? It's really easy. So we've got this space right here where we can type in our pitch and the pitches are limited to 600 characters. So on Twitter, I forgot what the Twitter uh, number of characters are, but uh, here we obviously have a little bit more. We, we limited it to 600 just to keep it concise because it is a short form type of pitch event. We're not, we're not uploading pages and pages, right? So keep it under 600 characters. But we did, we did allow for 32 additional characters, just in case you go a little bit over, it's fine. So you can see here, it says 632, but try to keep it 600. And you have a space where you can type in your name, email, website, and you can also upload an image. So we're gonna go ahead and do an example here. One of the things that I want to mention as well is that when you're copy and pasting from, let's say an Adobe Acrobat document or a Word document that has some formatting, bolding, those kinds of things, if you paste the text here, even though it says you're under 600 or 632 characters, sometimes there are hidden characters in there that will cause an error. So my suggestion is to remove any type of formatting or just retype the text in here. It's it's kind of weird, but it does happen where, especially I've noticed it with Adobe Acrobat documents where you copy and paste it. It says you're under the character count, but there's some weird hidden characters that causes it to go over. So in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and paste our pitch and I'm gonna type in my name. So. my website, and you can also click on this little bell. So that notifies you when someone, someone sends a comment on your, on your pitch. And then I'm going to attach an image. So this is where you attach your either comic book pages, character, concepts, any of those different things. And you are limited to five megabytes for the upload. So you can upload one file. So in this case, I'm gonna up upload this illustration about my uh, fantasy middle grade graphic novel. And I'm gonna click post. And so now it's posted here, but it says waiting for approval. So at this point, you're you're done with your pitch and you just have to wait until the actual pitch day for um, us to make it go live on the website. Now, what if you are an author and you don't have any fancy uh, illustration? So what we recommend that you do is go to a website like canva.com and you can create some some kind of visual um, bio i think i call it a card or something so and that will basically make your post stand out so here in the corner you have this little gear icon you can edit the 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 post that way and you can make changes then let's see here so let me upload mine so this is one that I created for, for this person. This is a test and I'll post it. So if you're an author, you can create something like this. And I just use Canva to create this. And it makes your, you know, it doesn't make your post uh, kind of bland. You can create something fancy and write your bio, contact information, that kind of thing. So that's what, what we, we recommend for, uh, for authors. And that should be it. Once you post it up and there's nothing else, you just wait for it to go live. And um, on pitch day, everything goes live and the uh, agents and uh, editors and publishers contact you and you're on your way to your publishing dream coming true. <laughs> so so that's it, I think. Um, I don't know, Vanya, do you have anything to add to that? Um, I think I'm just going to let everybody know that uh, YA is a thing now. We're super excited, obviously, to build it up. We will be having a Facebook page for everyone that wants to connect, especially for those that are looking to, um, you know, have friends in um, other eyeballs on their pitches before Pitch Fest. Um, 
but I also want to say thank you to everyone that has already uh, put in all this hard work for this beautiful website. We're just writing the coattails. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> thank you so much uh, for Kidlit GN. Um, I think there was a question um, in here, if you don't mind me answering it, about uh, whether or not there's some agents and editors that are going to be looking at both. And I think the answer is is yes, there are some that are going to overlap. Um, and so you can definitely, if you have a middle grade uh, pitch and a YA pitch, go ahead and pitch those. Um, but yeah, I don't know if there's any other questions, but that's at least the one that I saw. I'm sure there'll be more time for later, but um, that was the one that I just caught my eyeballs on. But. Yeah, we actually have a ton of questions in the chat. Yes. And the way that, the way that we... <laughs> scheduled um this is that um kid is gonna do you guys did sort of your overview i am gonna do an overview of um our pitch fest event and then we're gonna have quite a, a bit of time for q a at the end so keep putting your questions in the chat and i i think lisa is keeping the track of everything <laughs> I was trying to keep but boy they're they're coming fast and furious so thanks Lisa don't worry we are going to come back and answer all the questions okay so um kids comics unite pitch fest it, the difference between kidlit GN's pitch event and KCU pitch fest is that I think kidlit GN I, I believe you started as a pitch event I mean sorry as, as a Twitter event is that correct Ken right so it's it's really like you have a they have a website that is taking what used to happen on Twitter and recreating it on an on a dedicated website that and they're going to be doing a lot of promo to industry people to get eyeballs on their website during the pitch event time. Um, KCU Pitch Fest is more like kind of an old school competition where we have a panel of judges who are going to be focusing and voting on the pitches during a defined period of time. So um, this is the page. It's the Pitch Fest page on our website. And as you can see, it has a bunch of links up here that I'll talk through briefly. There's a um, form right here where you can put in your information to be notified when submissions open. Submissions are going to open on October 10th and they will be open until October 24th. And so you could put in your email and be notified or if you just wanna come back to the website around October 10th, there will be a different button then on October 10th and it says, it'll say something like um, purchase ticket or something. I, I don't, I, I can't remember exactly what the button's gonna say, but basically you are going to pay a fee in order to apply or in order to submit your work for the competition. So um, I will just, well, let me first go through these links up here at the top. So if you click on this link right now, it's gonna take you to our, um, the, the list of jury members that we have published on the website so far. There actually are a couple more people who we are gonna be adding to this list who are confirmed. One is Shannon Gallagher, who's an agent at Wernick and Pratt. And another one that we're excited about is Jasmine Richards, who is um, the founder of a book packaging company in England. So what's exciting about our panel of judges this year is that it is international. So we have a bunch of agents and editors um, from the United States, and we also have an editor from Australia, an editor from Canada, and an editor from the UK. So that's super awesome. Um, then scrolling back up here, if you wanna look at last year's showcase to just get a, a sense of what was submitted last year, you can click here on the 22 showcase. You can click and look at the winners from last year. Um, here, terms and eligibility is basically gonna take you down. Um, it's the same page, it's scrolling down the page basically. Um, gives you more information about that. Then we have this link here to pitching tips. I really wanted to give a shout out to this particular page um, because last year when we um, created the form for the judges to use when they were voting on the submissions, we had a final question that was something like, do you have any overall comments as a result of looking at all of these submissions? And wonderfully, 
a lot of the editors and agents on the jury actually did give us overarching comments, like the advice basically to people. And we compiled that advice in um, this article right here. So I highly recommend read this article because this is actual words that editors and agents said to us after looking at all the submissions. Okay, then um, let me go back here. So we also have an FAQ section, which is um, has a lot, might have answers for you if you have any questions. I'm gonna scroll down here. These are key dates. Uh, we've already, we're at September 6th right now. This is the info session. This coming Saturday is going to be a workshop um, going in depth onto how to create an effective graphic novel pitch. Um, then we have, oh, there's a mistake there. It should say kid lit gallery. Sub oh no. I guess, I guess this is the key dates for our pitch fest. This is not for the whole pitch of Palooza here. Um, so yes, this is KCU Pitch Fest gallery submission period, October 10th to the 24th. And then the winners will be announced and the gallery will be revealed during an event on November 4th that will also include an industry panel. So if you want, you will be able to attend that November 4th event, even if you haven't submitted a pitch you can still um, buy a ticket to attend that event. So the price for, um, or the fee for submitting your pitch for this competition is $95. And that includes both the um, submission fee and entry to the industry panel event on November 4th. And it's $50 if you only wanna attend the November 4th event. If you're a member of Kids Comic Studio, you get a 20% discount on everything. Um, I don't know how, I don't want to go super in depth to all of the um, in, the guidelines here. Um, oh, this I do want to mention to you. If you scroll down on the PitchFest page, we do have examples here of what the, um, the actual submission materials look like. And as you'll see, they are quite short, similar to Kidlet GN. So the, there's a basically, you're gonna be putting in your title, then a short synopsis. I cannot remember exactly how many words it is, but it might, it's short. <laughs> it's it's listed in the instructions. Um, and then the age range, the genre, the page count estimate. And then if you're an artist, um, last year, you were only able to submit two spreads. I believe that this year, you're, you're gonna have the ability to submit two to four spreads. So it could be two, could be three spreads, or it could be four spreads. Then you have um, this, another thing that we have, which is a little bit different, is a why statement, which is also very short, one or two paragraphs, explaining why you wrote the book or why it's important to you or what the story. Um, and then an author or illustrator or creator bio. And then over here on the right is the um, what it would look like if you are a writer only, as you can see, it's very, very similar to if you're an artist, just the main difference would be that instead of uploading um, artwork, you would be uploading pages from your script. And you can only upload, I believe, four separate pages from your script. So that is that section. And now what I wanted to quickly show you is what it's gonna look like if you pay the application fee and you are going to submit your pitch. So what you would do is once you um, pay for the application, you're going to have a login, which you'll be able to access through this little profile, tiny profile button on um, our homepage. If you click that, it takes you inside of a dashboard and then you would click this pitch fest here. You're not gonna see everything that I see because I'm an administrator on this website. So there's some things that I have up here that you wouldn't have, which also includes some elements on this um, project upload page. So the, the project acquired results, number of points, you're not gonna see that, I don't think. You will, but you will see project title, project description, and this is where you would put in your title, your, whoops, sorry about that. 
uh, your project description. Um, you'd pick the age range. You'd pick the genre and you can pick multiple genres. Then you would put in your page count estimate, et cetera, et cetera. Um, thumbnail is basically the cover image that's going to show on the gallery page of all the submissions. And then the spread, spread one, spread two um, would be if you're an artist. And actually, I think that we're still working on this. So there are going to be options for spread three and spread four. And then uh, if you're a writer only, it would be page one, page two, page three, page four. Then there's a whole section for you to upload information about yourself. And you can show whether you're agented or unagented. Um, and then your Twitter handle, Instagram handle, all of these things, these are going to show up on your um, submission page with little icons so that they link directly to any places where you want people to connect with you. Um, and I believe we're going to add, we're going to try to add a, like a general social media handle for if you have Blue Sky or Mastodon or something like that. And then if you have additional creators, if you're part of a team, um, you'll see that there is right now, there's no additional spot for you to upload additional creators. But if you change that and click here and say, yes, there are additional creators, then you see a new uh, spot to put in information about other people on your team. And you can say what type of contribution they are providing for your work. And I believe if you go down here, there's a little small plus button. So if there's even more than two people, you can add additional creators until you've uploaded your whole creative team. And then you would click update and that's how you would submit the pitch. So I think, where are we right now? Um, I think now I'm gonna quickly mention a little bit about the pitching workshop that we're doing in partnership with Kidlet GN this weekend. And then we will do our Q&A. Okay, so the pitching workshop is basically a three hour, so half day event from one to 4 p.m. Eastern this Saturday. So it's only a few days away. And it's, I'm really excited about the agenda that we have planned for you today because I think it kind of hits everything that you're gonna need to really understand how to put together an, an effective pitch. Basically, I'm gonna scroll down here and show you the schedule. Um, I am going to do a lesson where I show tons of examples and kind of walk you through all the different elements that make up a solid graphic novel pitch. Then we are going to have a one hour case study uh, conversation where Ken and Annette and um, David, who are all creators, are going to be showing you behind the scenes on their own pitches, how they evolved, like where they started and how they um, refined their pitch as they got feedback from different people and what happened as the um, pitch actually got acquired by a publisher. And then at three o'clock, we are going to have live critique of pitches. We got a bunch of pitches submitted to us for this workshop already. We've gone through it and we're super excited to dive in. And what this, this will be kind of like lightning critiques because each person, because of the number of pitches that we got and how much we would love to give feedback to everybody, I think it'll be about five minutes per pitch, but we, we're gonna think about it carefully in advance so that when we go through each pitch, we hit on the most important things, the most important pieces of, pieces of advice that we have for each creator on how to improve their pitch. And also of course, what we think is working really well with their pitches. Um, so yeah, that's what we have planned for this Saturday. All right, uh, we are at 9.03. So I think we're sort of more or less on time now because we are transitioning at this time to our Q and A. Um, Lisa, I know we've been getting lots of questions, right? Yeah, there's a ton. Um, I will do my best. Maybe um, what we should do is, could we start with um, technical questions for Kidlit GN and then technical questions for um, KCU Pitch Fest and then general pitching questions? Some of them apply to both, so I wasn't quite sure who they were asking for. 
Um, the one that came up a few times is how many times can you submit? And for specifically for Kidlet GN, can you spit, submit to the YA and to the Kidlet GN? Yeah, so on the Kidlet GN, we are allowing up to three different pitches to be posted. Um, as it stands right now, YA is entirely separate, but you can you can overlap definitely. And I think for um, KCU Pitch Fest, you, we oh, are... just to make things clear, mm -hmm. Ken, it's yes. three different projects, like one pitch per project. Right, right. Not three pitches for the same project. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and for um, KCU Pitch Fest, you can, I believe, submit up, up to three. Is that right, Lisa? That's what we said, yeah. But yes, you do yes. have to pay each time. So Yes, you would have to pay a separate entrance fee for each one, though. Um, okay, another question we have is, I'm an author illustrator. I was wondering if it needs to be complete work or if it can be partially done or partial dra draft sketches. Um, so for the pitch, you can really just pitch a pitch. <laughs> but when it comes down to it, when they start asking for stuff, right? Because because I've seen this happen a lot where um, somebody will pitch and it's a great idea and they'll get a positive reception from an agent. But then all of a sudden, they're not prepared to send anything more beyond the pitch. So their momentum is lost because now they're like, oh, can you wait You know, a couple of months while I finish this. So I think it's always a good idea to get it to a certain point before you actually start pitching it out there. So yeah, there's I to add to that, there's nothing more disappointing than to query an agent that you know, you've had your heart set on only to like send that full manuscript and then uh, be rejected because they just don't think you're ready. <laughs> right. And you go, Oh, you know, just don't jump the gun, be prepared. That's my advice. Yep. And I'm sorry, yeah. I got two very noisy, barky corgis, so I got to <laughs> keep muting myself. <laughs> I, I'm going to say for um, KCU Pitch Fest that I would recommend if you don't have finished art that you not submit yet. Because I just think that in the gallery, uh, most people are submitting polished final art. And if you're only submitting sketches, it's just not going to look as polished as everybody else. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't go forward for that. Um, okay, another question that applies to both is, will all pitches be viewable by agents or is there a pre-selection? And I think Vanya did answer for Kidlet GN that all pitches will be viewable. Yes, that's correct. It'll be open and viewable for everyone. Yeah, and with KCU Pitch Fest, all um, agents and editors on our panel are reviewing every single submission we get. Um, Jana, maybe you could talk a little bit about how like, the process is a little different for Pitch Fest because we invite the, a jury that we've pre-selected yes. to view and vote. But then later we send out massive emails to yes. a ton of industry professionals to view the final gallery. Uh, yeah, that's a really good point. Yes. Yeah, so so the gallery, um, as you could see on our website right now, last year's gallery is still available and we will be continuing that. So every year we will just have the previous year's galleries are still available to look at. So they're still floating out there. Um, one difference this year is that we will probably not put up on the website every single pitch that was submitted to us. We will have a cutoff. So pitches will have had to have received a certain number of votes from the panel members in order to be displayed on the final gallery. Um, but it will, you know, it'll be a good number, I would expect, that will be on the final gallery. Did I answer, uh, Lisa? Was there something yeah. else? I yeah. feel like I forgot something. No, I think that, uh, well, just that we do invite a large amount of people to view it after the- Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Period. Yeah, so I'll say really briefly about the voting process, what actually happens behind the scenes. Um, what happens- and I think we will follow a similar process this year, is that all of our jury members do two rounds of voting on the submissions. And the way we explain it to them is, the first thing we want you to do is look at the pitch 
and say, if this crossed your desk, would you request more materials? Almost like a query. Like if this came into you, would you ask for more? So it's a yes or a no. It's a binary yes, no. Then once they've answered yes, no, for all of the pitches that have been, um, that they're, you know, that are in our competition, then they pick their top five of everybody. And so based on all that, we have a whole numerical calculation that we non-numbers people worked really hard on. <laughs> then we have basically a ranking of all of the pitches. Um, so that's how the voting process work, will probably work. And then like Lisa said, we have a gigantic mailing list. So as soon as the November 4th final gallery goes live, we email the whole entire industry and invite them to come and view. Great. Um, okay, if you're a writer only, but have concept art from collaborators, are you um, able to post both pages and images from collaborators? Um, yes, on our on our part, you can post. Um, obviously, when it gets to the point, if um, the agent does show interest, then that's when you would explain that these illustrate that you're only a writer and the illustrations are you know from from other collaborators that you work with. So, but it's definitely um, you can post it. I would say for KCU Pitch Fest, that's a tricky question because if you, um, if it's just concept art and you haven't, you don't have an agreement with the artist that you are definitely planning to move together, move forward together as a creative team. Um, I'm not sure I would submit for a KCU Pitch Fest. I think it's totally fine if you're a creative team and you already have agreed to collaborate and you're definitely moving forward together. But if it's just concept art to show as an example, it might be a little misleading, I think. Um, okay. Um, is it better to submit sequential pages? I think that's mostly for um, TCU. I would lean towards yes, because I just think it helps um, people get a sense of your storytelling abilities. You don't have to, but I would recommend it. Okay. Um, is there any limit to the length of the story? I've been working on a middle grade short story, approximately the length of a comic book. Um, I would say we're talking about graphic novels, right? So it, it needs to be a certain length, I think, especially for uh, traditional publishing. If you're publishing a comic, then that's they have their own entirely uh, different formatting. Um, but for traditional publishing, they, you have to, I would say, look at comp mm -hmm. books out there in the same age group genre that you're looking at. And then you can kind of have an idea of what the length is. Um, and that's but what I, I would Aim for. I, I think that um, David Rickert, how long was his story, Jana? Do you remember? He pitched on our um, event and got you as an agent. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I honestly, I'm looking forward to David's case study on Saturday because I can't remember. <laughs> his is not a full length uh, middle grade. It's sort of like a um, nonfiction retelling of how food was made. Oh, do you mean like the book that he's doing now? Yeah, yeah. The... Yeah, yeah. It's it's um illustrated middle grade nonfiction. But it's not 220 pages. No, but I think it's maybe, I'm sorry, I don't remember the page count, but it's 96 maybe? I'm not 96 or 100 something. Yeah, um, I would concur oh. with Ken though about um the fact that you should definitely make sure that the project the the page count for the project that you're submitting is on par with industry standards for the particular age level. Yeah. Um, we had a few questions about do you have to have a complete manuscript in order to pitch, or a complete pitch <laughs> in order to pitch. I would say you don't have to, as long as you have the materials that 
are um, required for submit submission. Um, but I think Ken basic Ken and Annette both said that if you don't really have a finished pitch and you submit it and then somebody's really interested and follows up with you, then you're gonna scramble and you're also gonna be kicking yourself because you can't really follow up quickly. Yeah, I, f I feel like if you have maybe a really solid, solid, you know, outline, you might not need a full length manuscript, um, but it needs to be a really solid one. And because that's, that's all they have to go, you know, go, go on is, um is your whatever your synop your full length synopsis is going to be. So um, if there's going to be holes in it, then um, you're going to have to go back to the drawing board, I think. But, uh, but I think for graphic novels, they're a little bit more, at least in my experience, lenient when it comes to, you don't need the full script or a fully illustrated book, you know, to pitch. So. In fact, I would say uh, often having a fully finished, complete book could be detrimental because usually agents and editors want to work with you to help shape the project. That's true. Yep. When I uh, queried, I had um, agents ask for full, and then I've had uh, agents who offered um, without ever reading the full. Um, but the story was solid, like Ken said. You know, it was, I had, I think it was two page um, synopsis. And truthfully, uh, nobody read my full manuscript until the um, editor. <laughs> <laughs> we got into the uh, editing stage. That's when, you know, it was finally read. <laughs> mm, yeah. Um, okay, someone asked, how many pitches do you think each of these uh, events will receive? How many pitches? Um, I don't have the numbers on me, but it's definitely um, several hundreds on our on our part from last year. Um, yeah, I don't have the exact number, uh, but it keeps growing every year. And we also get a lot of, you know, repeat repitches of the same idea. So I think it's just gonna grow bigger and bigger. Yeah, last year we had 92, I believe, um, submissions. So yeah. Yeah. And I think part of that, at least on our part, was when we were doing it on Twitter, it is a free event. So we get more people just throwing ideas out there because it's kind of open to everyone, right? So um, unlike uh, a KCU, which is more curated, I think. So that's kind of the big differentiating factor. Um, okay, this is for you, Jana. Is there a benefit to submitting early in the submission period? Not really, no, because the judges are not going to look at it until after October 24th, so. Um, okay, and this is also for you, Jenna. If we submitted a story last year, will we be able to resubmit the same story this year if we have new content for it? I submitted a script only last year, but I would love the chance to submit again with illustrated spreads. Oh, I think that if you are, if you have illustrations and you didn't last year, absolutely you could resubmit, yes. Um, not sure who this one's for, but the question is, are agents and publishers from the jury, so that's probably KCU, allowed to contact any and all submissions or just the winners? Well, they the, the jury members will ha see everybody's contact information. Um, for In the final gallery that's published uh, on November 4th, only you know, the people who who are in the gallery, you'll be able to see their contact information. Yeah. Um, okay, I've gone through the questions I had. If people can raise their hands, because I'm sure I missed them, if they if there's something I didn't get to. Um, I did see one for me, I think, regarding uh, posting an image for KidLit GN. So you can only post one image but I think someone commented where you can combine 
uh, multiple comic pages per image. So you can have, you know, however many, however many pages you can fit in one image, as long as it's under the five megabyte limit. So it's kind of the tradition of posting on Twitter is what we're trying to adhere to. Um, just a short form type type of pitch uh, where you can post an image and post a paragraph of your pitch. So I'm not trying to uh, overcomplicate it. Um, I noticed in the chat that Danny said, does everyone in the workshop get a critique? And the answer is no, only the people who submitted um, their pitches already by, I think the deadline was today, <laughs> earlier today, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So we, we, we don't have room for any more to critique. Um, and the answer to Celeste's question is yes, the Saturday workshop will be recorded and we will send out the replay to all registrants. <laughs> oh, Jerry, you've had your hand up for a while. But you're mute, you're muted. All right, this is for Ken. Um, since we are trying to fit multiple illustrations in one image file, uh, are there dimen do you know what the dimensions happen to be for submitting? Uh, no specific dimensions. So it's whatever looks good. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Uh, it's whatever looks good in five meg. Yes. <laughs> Make sure to set it to uh, 16 colors. <laughs> so you can fit a lot of uh, image in there. <laughs> Oh, uh, boy, there's Shay says the icon to submit for Casey, if you're an author only, what should you use a photo? Yes, a photo would be fine. Um, I'm just scrolling through the chat. Uh, the critiques on Saturday are going to be for all different age levels of projects. We got projects ranging from very young all the way through YA. Um, and I think for an answer to Jeremy's question that for Kidlit GN, people can pitch to your YA website and your middle grade, both. Yes, correct? they yeah. can do both. And also on KCU. Mm -hmm. can wait, we that, oh. wait, that was confusing. There are two Kidlit GN sites. One's YAGN and the other is Kidlit GN. Right. Maybe what you you guys should do is put the uh, URL in the chat for each of them. Okay, I'll write it up. Okay. I guess if you have a burning question, there was there was so much going on in the chat. I'm not sure if we got everybody. So can you um, raise your hand? Peter? Hi, uh, this one's for Ken. I uh, just want to make sure since we only have the 600 to 630 word limit, um, is the summary purely story or should we be mentioning like maybe age range or anything like that or just the story itself? Um, so it's a pitch. So it's, we've seen it where you can include the uh, the genre, the age group in there. But obviously, if you're pitching for a middle grade, you can kind of have an idea of what the age range is going to be. So you don't have to repeat it. If, if you really are kind of tight on the word count, then... Um, That'll, I think that'll help you. I think there's also a list of hashtags um, on our website. So you don't have to spell it all out. You can just say hashtag MGGN or ER for early reader. Um, right. Right. Don't we have that? Yeah. So, so that's kind of remnant from the Twitter side is the use, <laughs> of, the, use of the hashtag. So while I like it, um, I'm not sure how many agents are going to be searching by hashtag because, you know, it is a lot of things to remember. So, but it is there as an option for you to use. Um, we had another question about submitting hybrid or highly illustrated novels. 
I I guess my feeling is that for Pitch Fest, um, it is a graphic novel Pitch Fest. So if your hybrid work incorporates some element of comics in some way, like for instance, you use panels and speech balloons in, in some way within the project, then it's fine. Yeah, there was, I think there was a question about the difference between a, a picture book graphic novel versus an early reader graphic novel. The picture book is uh, formatted with 32 pages. It's meant to be read by an adult. Um, the early reader graphic novel is smaller and the words and stories should be able to be read independently by an early reader. Ryan. Hey guys, um, I'm Ryan. Just wanted to say really good to meet you all. Uh, this is really informative. And my question is for Jana. Um, mm -hmm. So let's say uh, you're, well, in my case, I'm, I'm unaged, unaged. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I don't have an agent and all this is totally new to me. Let's say I end up in a top five or something. What happens next? Do you get an agent? Do you get, do you talk directly with the publisher? Like, how does that, what happens? Um, if you are in the top five, that means people are really interested in your work just based on what happened last year. And um, so the, the winner of last year's competition had like a feeding frenzy of agents <laughs> and she ended up choosing one of them and she's working with that agent now. And um, I don't know whether they have, you know, gotten a book deal yet or if they're still in the process of submissions. Um, the number two winner already had an agent, but she got a book deal after doing uh, the pitch fest. And then I cannot remember whether it was number three or number four, but I remember that the third or the fourth place winner was actually a client of mine and um, their project interestingly led to them getting a graphic novel deal with a very, very good publisher um, that wasn't their actual project, but it was because of that particular pitch. I think also like we will highlight the top vote getters in the gallery, but a lot of other people in the gallery were also contacted. Yes. So the winners is more just like they got the most votes and we like to mm -hmm. showcase them, but a lot of other people were contacted by agents and editors. Any other questions? Brigitte, thanks for saying that <laughs> in the chat. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, let's see, Tim? Yeah, that's me. Can you hear me? Yep. Just a little question about the blurb and such. I mean, mm -hmm. it's under character blurb and everything. When trying to, it's always good to know how to write one of those, right? Mm -hmm. Is it good to look at existing published graphic novels and see like how they wrote the blurb? That's a good way to check. Mm. Like on the back of the cover, so per se. Yeah, I would say a short synopsis is not exactly like a jacket blurb, though sometimes it can be. <laughs> So basically, it's a short paragraph that summarizes your story and. It doesn't give the beginning, middle and end, though, does it? Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. Annette, do you, do you have a comment on this? <laughs> you mean the pitch, like the log line or the synopsis? You... I think that's what you're talking about. The short synopsis, right? The yeah. short synopsis, yeah, it needs to include your main character, your protagonist. Um, what else? Um, must the inciting incident for your story, um, what is your protagonist's goal, and what is the central conflict? And then you have to, you know, put in why yours is a little different. <laughs> Does that make anything clearer? I mean, I definitely. I, you can look at the um, 
Well, actually, so on Kidlit GN's website, can people see previous pitches? No, we we actually that's one of the things that we do is we remove it just because from from the Twitter space, you know, mm -hmm. people are concerned, oh, somebody might steal my idea or something like that. So we had the policy of clearing them up after the pitch <laughs> event. I don't know if you are if you're on Twitter or X or whatever it's called now. You can search some of the hashtags, right? Um, and people have left their old ones from previous pitches, uh, but be sure to look for the ones that got the hits, not the ones that uh, you know didn't get very many likes. Some yeah, of the other, can, I think you can use uh, Kid Lit GN as the hashtag. It'll probably mm -hmm. show um, all Anyone the pitches. Anyone who's left from, it, mm -hmm. right? And I, I think one of the big things that Annette was trying to say as well was um, trying to put in why, what's the why of your story, right? Why does it stand out? What's, what's different about it? Is it because most stories have the ABC, the structure, we already know what's going to happen. We know who the bad guy is. We know who the good guy is. So what is that re underlying subtext of what makes it different is the character trying to find their identity is it about friendship is it about so even trying to hone in on that to kind of create that separation from all the other sto fantasy story or adventure or sci-fi that's very similar um and i think that's one of the things that will make your pitch stand out in 600 characters <laughs> i just remembered and um that if you go to the pitch wars website um those include a wide range of stories and they've been working with a mentor to, to, to curate like their perfect pitches. So you can go through it and read some of these um, well-written pitches. That's a great tip. And I've already and, also you know, seen a lot of um, use of comps in pitches, even just mentioning something in there as far as, you know, another movie or book that's mm -hmm. has similar concepts in it um that gives something visual for the agent or the editor to kind of oh okay i see where you're going with this this is exciting you know mm -hmm. uh, just using pre-existing uh, projects that are already out there to kind of help boost your your idea uh pitch wars sam was asking what was the resource it's the pitch wars website yeah, if you, um if you just look Google search pitch wars and then 2022 or I don't think 2023 is up. Oh no, they're no longer. Okay. Yeah. 2022, it might have the um, showcase still up. I don't and know. You can also look at the, um, the pitch fest submissions from last year, especially um, the top, the top submissions and just get a sense of all the different ways that they wrote their short synopsis. Um, Hal's wondering if people will be able to see a preview of their pitch before they publish it. Yeah, well, once you hit um, submit, it does show a preview underneath, but it'll say awaiting approval. And then you can go back and edit if you need to, you know, if you make a mistake or need to make a change. So you can still change it after you you publish it. Yeah, same for KCU too. You'll be able to edit it until um, the submission period ends. Um, for Kids Comics Unite Pitch Fest, um, you know, honestly, I feel like this is a question for Jade, who's our web guru person. <laughs> um, Lisa, do you know the answer of I mean, I know people will be able to edit it. I don't know if we'll have to see if you'll be able to see it as it will appear in the gallery ahead of time. I don't know the yeah. answer. Yeah, I don't have an answer for that. I think we will have to follow up in case you and let you know. Um, and we, um, someone's also asking for clarification about if picture books are allowed submissions. And I think the answer is if they're graphic novel picture books. Yes. Yep. Um, Janae asked, I believe in previous years, some agents were looking for submissions from BIPOC or specific groups. Is it still a thing to add that hashtag? 
So I, f I feel like I'm not sure what the options are that we have inside of our um, uh, application form or submission form, but in the section that says your why, you can definitely mention if you know that is an aspect of your story that's important. I, I think I sent the um, link to 2021 Pitch Wars Showcase. So at least you'll see what what these were like two years ago. And this is working with a mentor to create these pitches. And they're all amazing. That's such an awesome tip, Annette. <laughs> That's what I did when I was trying to figure out how to write a synopsis, I'd read somebody else's synopsis, I'd copy it, and then I'd change their character with my character changed. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's great. We'll, we'll be talking about lots more tips like that on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess that we can kind of wrap it up for this evening. Um, any Any last words? Ken, Annette, Vanya. Um, last Good words. Everyone. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Good luck, everyone. Uh, meet, yeah. Definitely check out the website uh, on our blog as oh, well. Blog. We, yeah, we have a lot of posts going in there, and there's a lot of giveaways for you know Clip Studio subscriptions and books and critiques that kind of stuff. So definitely mm -hmm. check out the website. Yeah, and I guess I should put in a plug for a gigantic blog article that we have on Kids Comics Unite, which is how to pitch your graphic novel, I think, uh, which is try we try to walk you through very comprehensively what's in a graphic novel pitch. And I hope some of you can join us on Saturday for the workshop. It would be really awesome to see you for that.